Hello, and welcome back to this course of videos on MongoDB NoSQL database. Now, in this video, we'll be looking at the data types you can use to submit data to your Mongo database, and then looking at the equivalent data types in the MySQL relational database. So, first thing we're going to do, as previously, we're going to open our command prompt or terminal and run our MongoD application, which will start our server listening on localhost on port 27017. Next thing I'm going to do is connect to Robo Mongo, which gives me a GUI, a graphical user interface to interact with my MongoDB database. If you remember from the previous video, we started our Shustor database and we added a collection called customers. If I right click here and view documents, you can see there are no documents added as yet. We want to change that. I'm just going to paste um, a document, an insert statement here with a document which really illustrates the different types of data types available. Um, let me just, oh that's okay. Um, so, to go back to this statement here, db.customers database is our shoe store uh, database. That, that object represents our shoe store database. Then customers represent our customers collection. Insert is the method. Op we have our opening and closing parenthesis and within these opening and closing parenthesis, the argument that we pass, or the parameter we pass, is our object, which is actually a document. We are passing in our single document, uh, which is the equivalent of a row in a relational database. So, let's go through the different data types here. So the first data type is an object ID. Now, when we, for our key here, we've named it underscore ID. Now this is telling Mongo that you want this to be your primary key. Now a primary key is a key that uniquely identifies this particular document. Um, so we are going to, and, and for the underscore ID field, the data type that you need to use for the primary key field is an object ID data type, which is a BSON data type, BSON being um, the vehicle that is used to store uh, data in the MongoDB data database, and it's a binary form of JSON. So the the parameter that's submitted, or the argument that's submitted um, to this object ID uh, is a 12-byte string. Now, the 12 bytes, uh, that's 24 characters. Um, I've just put 24 ones. Um, the, so, the object ID, if you don't submit a primary key for a uh, to Mongo, if you submit a document without a primary key, MongoDB will create the primary key for you. So it will just came up with a random string here, which represents 12 bytes. Um, in this instance, we have submitted ourselves because we want to specifically, explicitly, explicitly state what our primary key is. Now, so our next key value pair, or our next field, is a string, name of James. A string is simply a uh, sequence of characters. Um, our next, we have our age. Now, I know I've put 43.5, which is a little bit odd, but I wanted to demonstrate the fact that Mongo can support two types of numeric data types. One is a double, which is a floating point number, which I've put here, and the other is an integer, um, which I have here. An integer is a whole number, so MongoDB supports both of these numeric data types. Now, the next data type we have is an array. If you can see, this is the beginning uh, square bracket of the array, and this is the ending square bracket of the array. So we have a key value pair where the value is an array, and within this array, we have two strings uh, contained within this array, which is the value of the key value pair. Uh, the next data type that we have, um, our value is actually an object. Now this would be called an embedded object, because if you remember, the, uh, the argument that we're submitting to the insert method 
is an object itself. So we're actually within the, that, that greater object, we're submitting a key value pair, sorry, a key value pair, and the value to that key value pair is an object. Within that object, we have three uh, key value pairs in here, two strings and an integer. Now, so that's the sub object. Uh, the next key value pair we have, we the value is a boolean. A boolean can either be true or false. In this case, we're using false to self employed. So next, we're going to insert a date. Now, this date format we're putting here, the value here says new new date. So we need to put in these keywords here, new date. So it's similar to our object ID, um, where we have an object ID and then an argument that we pass. Same with new date. The argument is a string which is this particular date format. Now, it may look a little bit confusing, but this is called the UTC date format, which is a date format, a date standard, which applies globally. So rather than actually having a particular time zone, UTC um, is a time zone that is used globally. It is actually equivalent to GMT, which is the time zone used for England, but was used globally. So you can see here we have four digits for the year, a dash, two digits for the month, a dash, and two digits for the day, then a T for time. This is a 24-hour clock, so 14 is 2 p.m., uh, colon, and then two digits for the hours, and then two digits for the minutes, and end with a V. So there are, there are other ways you can submit a date to MongoDB, but this is the safest way to submit a date and ensure we uh, record the correct date. Um, the, the final key value pair, the final data type that we're submitting is null. Now, you wouldn't see this so much in uh, MongoDB because as we mentioned in previous videos, unlike relational databases, uh, let's say I have 10 different records and nine of them all have their religion stated as a string and the 10th value, the person doesn't wish to, to say their religion, um, we don't need to put null here as we do with relational databases. We can just completely leave this out. Um, that is the, the flexibility and schemaless nature of MongoDB. But in this case, just to illustrate, I have put in the null value. So I'm just going to commit this to our database. It's inserted one record. Um, if I now view my document, you can see that um, as I mean, this has actually changed. Everything else is, is the same. It's added, it's actually turned this into a certain point number, which was an integer before. Uh, nothing to worry about. And instead of new date here, it's changed it to ISO date. So actually the real date, the uh, format that is being used in MongoDB is ISO date. And also it's added a point zero 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 at the end of my time. Uh, I guess that is milliseconds, I assume it's added. Um, so that is actually the way the, the data is stored. So looking at the equivalent record now in MySQL quickly, um, I am just going to close down my, I'm not going to close it down actually because you might want to look at it. I am going to minimize my MongoDB database. I'm just going to minimize my server, which is obviously still running. Um, and let's go to my MySQL database. I'm going to log in quickly and I have created a table in here um, which is similar to my RevoMongo. So again we have our shoe store database in um, MySQL and obviously instead of collections they're called tables and within tables I have my customers uh, table and so let's just look at the data types that we've used. So um, I have ID, so with uh, I have created my own ID. Um, unlike uh, MongoDB, where it was an object ID with a data type, I'm simply using an integer of 11 characters here for my ID. Um, so for your, in, in a relational database like MySQL, the data type for the primary key can be any type of data type, unlike here where it's specified as an object ID data type. For my name, I have my string. In MySQL, it's known as varchar, variable character, and I specify 
Again, this is the uh, with relational databases, you have to be much more specific about your schema. Um, and I have to specify that the maximum it can go to is 50 characters. Um, obviously, we don't have any of that when we're creating a, do a document and a value of string in uh, Mongo. My age, I have my double, which is the same. Um, I, with my age, I use a double value, well, a floating point number here. Um, for, however, now email address on Mongo use an array. There is no equivalent of an array, so I haven't even added the email addresses field in here because I can't, there's no array data type for relational databases. As I showed before, um, in order to um, make sure my databases are normalized and there's no duplication of data, I would need to create a separate table called customer emails and put my multiple customer emails in there. Um, similar for best friend. There, we, with best friend we have the object data type here that we submitted. There is no object data type in uh, MySQL or relational databases. So again, I would have to create a separate best friends table, and this best friends table would have the details of my best friends in. Um, and then we would join them, we would link them together between the primary keys and foreign keys, as we mentioned in the previous video. Um, Self-employed, again, we have Boolean value in our MongoDB database. We don't actually have a Boolean value in MySQL, but you can just use tiny int is basically a very small numeric integer. And instead of using true and false, you would just use zero and one, um, which we still does the job. And insert date, we have date time, which is very similar to the ISO date. Now the date, the format is, is slightly different to the date time uh, data type in MySQL. If we just view our table here, we can see this is the format here. Similar, but it doesn't have the T at the start. It would be the uh, T. The T was here, and the Z was here um, for our ISO date uh, type in MongoDB. And this is quite different. So that is the difference between uh, the major data types in MySQL and MongoDB. Just to mention, there are other, a few other data types in MongoDB that we can take advantage of. There's a regular expression data type. You can also, in uh, in both databases, you can store very large binary objects. Um, in MongoDB, you could, uh, MongoDB and MySQL, you can store entire files in there. We won't cover it in this lesson, but we'll cover it later because it's slightly more complex. Uh, but in in MySQL, it would be, if I just open up so we can see the different uh, data types to choose from, um, it is called a blob data type. Um, this is this is how you store a very, very large data type in MySQL. And just to look at the data types in MySQL, you see it's a lot more varied, the data types in MySQL, than it is in Mongo. Uh, if you look, all of you have all these different dates uh, types. Um, these are all numeric data types, whereas in MongoDB you really only have integer and double, but you have all these different types in uh, in MySQL database. So in MySQL relational databases, uh, you fix a schema up front, and these the schemas are a lot more complex and a lot more detailed. Um, and there's a lot more choice for your schemas and data types in MySQL than in a NoSQL database like MongoDB. So I hope that gives you a good understanding of data types in MongoDB as well as MySQL. And I look forward to 